Praise the Lord. I'm so glad you've taken the time to join me once again for 10 Times Better. 10 Times Better is that conversation uh, that is relationship focused, but also with a special insight into the kind of man that a man can become, whom God has created him to be. But also, uh, it's a conversation with the ladies to uh, give them some insight how to help to develop full manhood in the key men in their lives. So this is a relationship series, but it's focused on men, but it also has great insight for women. We're so happy and honored that uh, clearly 70% of our our viewing audience are females because this is a very important subject to them. They raise their sons, perhaps without the benefit of a father in the house or uh, maybe a dad that is not up to uh, the task of being a father and not just someone who brings people into the world. I am glad you're my guest again tonight and uh, I want you to do something for me. Won't you please uh, tag me to three or four people. Uh, let them know what we're doing. Inbox them, tweet them, text them, call them if you have to. But let them know 10 times better is on once again. Now, we were talking about choice men the last time. And I want to take you back to Second Chronicles 25 and go down to verse 5, and then we will uh, continue our conversation. Now, this conversation for the last few episodes has centered around a man's ability uh, within his power to create his own identity. The Bible is clear. It says, as a man thinks, so he is. So is he. So my thought patterns create who I am as a person, create my character, because my thought patterns are responsible for my ultimate actions. So I cannot disconnect how I think as a man from what I do as a man. It is impossible. There is no action no matter how spontaneous it feels, that is not preceded by a thought. Your mind is craftable. Your mind is that, that clay that God gives you the privilege and the ability to mold into something that would please God or something that pleases others. So many times men, uh, before I get into the scripture today, many times men, craft themselves to appeal to a certain group of people. Sometimes they're male friends, sometimes females, but it limits who they can become because they have decided to create themselves just for the satisfaction of people and left the creator, left God out of the equation. As the Bible says, his ways are higher, his thoughts are higher. So there's another dimension of thinking, another dimension of doing that is possible for every man. And part of 10 times better is helping you discover not only the pathway, but the steps to get to be the best possible man you can be, but also ladies that you know how to encourage and uh, direct the men in your life so they can become all that God has called them to be. So Second Chronicles 25 verse 5 says, Moreover, Amaziah gathered Judah together and made them captains over thousands and captains over hundreds according to the houses of their fathers throughout all Judah and Benjamin. And he numbered them from 20 years old and above and found them 300,000 choice men able to go forth, watch the versatility, to war that could handle spear and shield. Talking about choice men. It is imperative that you understand that a man that finds himself unable to handle major multitasks at the same time is limiting his potential. I've come to the conclusion that God has wired men to be able to handle major multitasks at the same time, even though we may resist that exposure and resist the discovery of that ability. Sometimes many men will say, well, let me finish this before I do this or, you know, don't ask me any questions until I get done with 
you know, X, Y, Z stack, uh, task. But the reality is that a man is limiting his ability as he habitually avoids doing more than one thing to completion at a time. Now, we have no problem with this dynamic when it comes to things like sports. Comes to things like um, running a pattern for football or, or playing a sport, baseball, or soccer, or some other team that requires versatility. A man, a choice man, has to be versatile. But it all begins with his thinking. So the cause and effect dimension of thinking uh, is an undeniable dimension that every man has available to him. As a man thinks, he becomes. So we are not accidents. We are the fruit, if you will, the manifestation. We are the produce of our own thoughts. So when I get to a point where I am 18, 19, 20 years old, and I'm being called on to do things that I've not been prepared for, I can, I, as a man, I can start to feel some frustration because, watch this, I have not prepared for it, and I am offended or feel assaulted because you're asking me for things that my image gives the impression that I can handle. Many men work very hard on producing an image that will appeal, but not necessarily building up a skill set that will support the image. I call it advertising something in the window that's not in the warehouse behind the store. So it's imperative we understand that the Bible reveals there's a solution to this. There's a need for renewal to produce transformation. Renewal is connected to transformation. There's a need for renewal in order for transformation to occur. Now, when you think of transformation, I want you to think of um, metamorphosis, the stages of change that a butterfly goes through, starting out as a caterpillar, crawling on the ground, ends up as a, as a butterfly flying through the air, starting in a cocoon, that whole formation process, uh, looking as though it won't produce what ultimately becomes a beautiful vice for a butterfly. Men go through transformation. And ladies, let me give you a hint here. You don't ever want to attach your future to a man that does not yet know what he wants to be. Now listen to me. Having a job, even having a business, does not mean that the man knows who he is created, designed, or who he wants to be, what his purpose in life, you, you cannot fully comprehend that based on his vocation or his business interest. Because you and I know people that have been absolutely stellar in their careers, but not so stellar when it comes to their personage, when it comes to them personally. So every human being, men and women, have to be careful that you don't cultivate an image that is more glow and show than substance. So watch what the Bible says about this renewal to produce transformation. Go to 2 Corinthians 4, and I want to show you something. 2 Corinthians 4, uh, verse 16, and we'll see something about the diligence needed, the consistency needed, in order for um, this to become your reality. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16, and the Bible reads something like this. For which cause we faint not. For which cause we faint not. We don't give up. Now, one of the hardest things to do is to find your life pace. A lot of times what causes us to uh, remain, create an identity where people don't expect us to finish is because we're hard chargers, but we're not finishers. So what we have to do is find a pace that gets us to completion, gets us to victory, gets us to accomplishment. Because the worst, worst thing that a man can do is have those that love him feel as though he's not dependable. But the impression people have of us has usually been built by us. Their perspective on us, their perception of us, usually is something we've created in their eyes based on 
the actions, the words that we've used. Watch what the book says. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, though the image that we've created is one, watch this, that is not eternal. It is something that has to be constantly worked upon because it fades like an image in a mirror. This image that we, we work so hard to achieve is aging and dying while we're even trying to maintain it. Watch what this says now. It says, so, 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 but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man, watch this, is renewed day by day. Our hope is not just in the image that we create for others to see. Our hope is that this inward man must be intentionally improved day by day, and that cannot happen unless our thinking changes. Now watch where else we're going. So, day by day commitment to being a better you. Day by day commitment to uh, revealing that you are a chosen individual. If I go to Colossians chapter three, the process for this begins. I go to Colossians chapter three, the, the process for this begins and I look at it and I see how God well, let's go to Ephesians 4 first. Okay. Um, now, what I want to show you, I want to give you steps for this renewal of your thinking, for this transformation of your thinking. Go to Ephesians 4, uh, verse 23, I believe we want to take a look at. I'm having a little vision issue today. Now, watch what it says now. So, day-by-day -day commitment. And then Ephesians 4, 23 says something powerful and brief. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind and be renewed in the spirit of your mind where your thoughts originate where your contemplation is where your meditation is when you're before your thoughts ever become words or actions be renewed in other words a renovation a renewal back to uh, right thinking right processes right outcomes be renewed in the spirit of your mind so a day-by-day -day commitment has to be followed by constant renewal because every man is pulled in at least two directions every day. The demands that his life and the world put upon him and the opportunities that God gives him. The demands of society and the opportunities of the kingdom. The I gotta do it's of the world and the I get to do it. The obligation of the world versus the opportunity that God gives you for greater things. And it all starts with the renewing of our minds. Now let's go to Colossians. I want to show you something. Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. So we're walking down the text, and I'm getting to, going to get to the new part in just a minute. And watch what verse 10 says. Colossians 3, 10. And have put on the new man which is renewed, watch this, in knowledge. There is no renewal of the mind without some new knowledge. And watch this, and new knowledge can rehabilitate an individual's thinking. You didn't hear me. The word of God is, is empowered and created in such a way, not only will it create faith, but it will create new patterns, which creates new identities. Man, this is some good stuff. Watch this now. So, so, so put on purposely. Then we are back to that daily commitment. Put on the new man, the new you, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So now I am modeling myself, not after someone I admire in the community. I'm admiring myself based upon the presentation of who God is. Because I desire to be this choice man in the eyes of everyone that's assigned to love me and who I am assigned to love. Now let's go to Philippians chapter 2. And I want to show you something else that I believe is going to really uh, going to bless you. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, very familiar. You've seen it before. Um, and we're going to go down to verse 5. Philippians chapter 2, we're going to go down to verse 5. And you've seen it before. Let this mind be in you, 
which was also in Christ Jesus. There's the dilemma. There's the battle. So you've got this day-to-day -day commitment. I want to think different because I want to be different. Listen to me, man. Listen to me, women. I want to be different. I want to be transformed. I want to think differently, so I do differently. I'm going to think differently, so I speak differently. Think differently, so I respond differently. And this transformation will not work unless it is a day-to-day -day commitment. And I am committed to being renewed in my knowledge. Because new knowledge will really rehabilitate a mind that has been, if you will, hindered by incorrect learning for so many years. So the book says, the Bible is letting us know that the, in verse 5, let this mind, allow this mind to be in you. Participate in this new mind that's available to you because there's a new you that God has promised you. And that new you is not a manifestation immediately on the outside. It is a change on the inside that produces different reactions outside of you. That renewal is in the inner man. The inner man, thinking, feeling, doing, where things originate in your thought process. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What a phenomenal invitation, my brother, that you and I have, that the Lord Jesus himself would share his mind with us, and that that mind would become a very dominant force in our lives, allowing us to produce promise to discover purpose, to walk in our God-given destiny, and therefore walk in the power and authority to achieve what God has created you to be. Many of you watching me are frustrated right now because you were asked the wrong questions when you were young. You were asked a simple question that most of us, especially my age, were asked. What do you want to be when you grow up? And that requires you to do an outer man search, to look around you and try to cultivate an image based upon what you see or what you observe around you in your life, depending on the, the environment that you came from, whether it was the, the projects where I came from or the upside of town where some of you may have lived. The outstanding individuals are quite different from urban settings to suburban settings at times, from the projects to Society Hill, as we used to call it. Those images are very clear. But when I'm asked, what do you, who do you want to be? What do you want to be when you grow up? It causes me to search in the lexicon, in the cornucopia of images that are surrounding me by day. And then I make an evaluation. I want to be like that. And that for a man can be something good or something not so good. But when I'm asked, the internal searching question, what problem do you want to solve? I've got to search my heart, search my mind. I start to discover passions and resources within me that I never thought were there. All because of the question you were asked, whether it appeals to the outer or the inner. Now, men, you can understand what I'm about to say, and ladies, you can do. How many times have you been attracted to someone who, in your eyes, was absolutely beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, uh, very, very attractive? It was just everything you thought. They had it going on and popping because of the way they looked, and then you got to know them and found out that the inner individual was not nearly as glorious as the outer individual appeared to be. Because if my inner is not supporting my outer, if my inner qualities are not supporting my outer visibility, then I am advertising something in the window of the store that is not in the warehouse. Choice men. Let Jesus in. Allow access to the lives by the Spirit and the Word of God. My job is not to reinforce your title. My job is to help you discover purpose so you can be strong, a strong man, a choice man. Because, brother, God gives you life, but then you've got to learn how to live. I'm out of time, but I'm certainly not out of word. I want to thank you for joining me. 
on 10 times better, please tag at least five people. Let them know. Expose them to 10 times better. Invite people to join us every time we come on. Men's groups all over the country are, uh, are gathering around the 10 times better conversation before, then the, then the conversation, then after the conversation. You can be a part of that. And let me know if you're forming a 10 times better men's group and bring the ladies in so they can hear about it too. I look forward to talking to you next time. Choice men on 10 times better.